the autumn walk. Do you remember that time we went on that autumn walk with Daddy and your brothers? That one day after lunch, when the weather was cold and grey, the leaves had changed colour and birds came out to play. Look for chestnuts, Dad said. Do you remember them from last Christmas when we ate them before bed? We cooked them on the fire and ate them hot. You liked them so much, you ate the whole lot. They grow on the trees in the forest here. Come, we'll find them together, Dad said. So you and your brothers all put on your Wellington boots. It was muddy and a rainy day, but the rain is good for tree roots. We parked our car. And we entered the woods. It started to rain a little, so you put up your hood. The footpath was quiet and the earth beneath our feet was damp. But you sure managed to find some puddles to play in. All I heard was stamp, stamp, stamp. You pulled me aside, said to me, These aren't normal puddles, Mummy. They're silent puddles. As you look closely, Why are these silent puddles? I asked. To which you replied, There are no frogs or tadpoles in them anymore. It's just mud, mostly. The leaves have all fallen. The floor is coloured in yellow, red and brown. As you kick the leaves up, you hear your brother shout, Look what I found! You run over to find a fully bush with long green leaves with a crinkly edge. It didn't seem like much. But if you look closely in the middle of the leaves, that is where the chestnut lives. Dad told you that. The spiky things are just the shell for the nuts surrounding it. But you thought they were as sharp as knives. You said, I don't want to eat chestnuts like that. They were spiking my mouth and I don't want that. Dad laughed and said, don't be silly. We don't eat them with the spikes on. Look here, I'll show you. Come on. With that he grabbed a spiky chestnut from the bush. He popped it on the ground and stamped on it with a little push. If you're lucky, the case will split open and a brown nut will appear inside. You managed to do it first time and you gleamed with so much pride. But the chestnuts weren't the only thing we found on our forest wander. There are so many things to find, we just needed to head yonder. As we walked, we discover a field of dried sunflowers. Their great big droopy heads crackle at the touch. You and your brothers like the sound of the crunching brown petals so much. That is where they must have been when they all died, said your little brother Ted. For they are all facing the same way and very evenly spread. Look, says your dad, this is a field for harvesting seeds. You can see what the flower has turned into. It's filled with sunflower seeds. Dad placed them all in your little hands. They're not quite like the ones you buy in the shops. We took some home in our pockets to plant in our pots. Your little twin brothers had found some fallen sunflowers. They turned them into swords, flagpoles and javelins and acted like they had superpowers. Your little brother Tob stumbles off. He sees something special and shouts, Look what I've come across. Everyone hurries over and peers over Tom's shoulder to find a giant slimy snail 
gliding across a great big boulder. I had never seen one so big. Tom popped it back onto the big brown leaf. It even popped its head out, maybe, as a sigh of relief. We kept walking along the muddy path until we climbed up on a small ridge. We came across a beautiful orchard filled with fruit trees and it even had a little bridge. There were apple trees, pear trees and even mandarin trees galore. You all ran to pick up some of the apples and put them into your pockets from the floor. With our pockets all full, we began to walk back down the ridge. Tom ran ahead and then all we heard was, Come and look at this. You and your brothers ran ahead. Be careful of the mud. Don't slip, me and your dad said. We came to a fence where Tom stood in surprise. He was looking at a massive horse with grass in his mouth and was covered by flies. Your dad picked you up one by one and let you touch the horse's nose. It seemed to like you so much as it wouldn't stop sniffing your clothes. You reached in your pocket to retrieve a pair. The horse had already sniffed it out and gave you a scare. As he gnaws down on the fruit, we hear him munch. All the juice of the pear spills out with every crunch. Ooh, you scream. The horse has just got slobber all over my jeans. We fed the horse some more fruit and gave it one last pet. We left the horse as the sky started to turn grey. And as we parted our furry friend, he even gave us a friendly little neigh. Oh no, you said. We must find some shelter fast. There's a shed over there. Do you think we'll make it in time, you asked. We all ran to the shelter from the thunder, laughing and squealing until we got under. The thunder frightened you a little bit, but your dad reassured you and said, the thunder is miles away. You can count how many miles away it is between each thunder strike. So we began to count between each strike. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi. Soon enough, you weren't scared anymore and the rain started to ease off and the sun began to peep out. Look, there's a rainbow, you and your brothers yelled. In the distance, there was a colourful rainbow that had taken over the sky. The clouds started to disappear and the birds came out to fly. Right guys, back to the car we go, your dad said, and I didn't want to go. Can we stay a bit longer, you responded. Don't worry, we will come back again soon. Maybe next time you can bring some friends, Dad replied. And it seemed to change your tune. We headed back past the hall, through the orchard of apples down the small ridge, past our snail friend and through the field of sunflowers, past the spiky chestnut bush, through the big muddy puddle and into the car we piled in. You guys had so much fun. You all fell asleep with a big cheesy grin. I am glad you were so happy. It was lovely to see you and your brothers having fun. Now off to bed and get some sleep. See you in the morning, my son.